So let's turn to these five stages of business success. The first stage is awareness. Here is where you have to define success, what it means to you or for your company. And until you actually define success for yourself, it's being defined by others. It's being defined by the culture. It's being defined by your past. It could be defined by your hopes. It, or it's even being defined by advertising. Now, once you have your def definition of success, you're released from priorities that are not relevant or meaningful. It helps you sort. Another reason to have a solid definition for success is so that you don't get seduced or distracted by the demands of other people or your job. Because if you do, then that's what tends to define what's important to you. If you haven't taken the opportunity to define it first for yourself, now, during the awareness stage of business success, it's important to understand the power of intentionality. This is about your intention to create success according to your own definition. Your intention needs to be powerful enough to earn your resolve to take action, to create your purpose, and to give meaning to what is significant to you. It's also important to understand the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. How popular you are with your office or with your customers. It's all about what's outside or external to you. Whereas intrinsic rewards are things like autonomy, competence, uh, relatedness, purpose, achievement. The intrinsic rewards are highly energizing and they're very engaging. And what we're finding out today is that extrinsic rewards are now less important as day-to-day -day motivation is becoming more strongly driven by intrinsic rewards. Now, why is this? Well, let's take a look. Extrinsic rewards, remember, as I said earlier, defined mainly from wealth or fame or physical appearance. The research tells us that when we put a disproportionate focus on the extrinsic rewards, we are prone to higher stress, depression, and possible bouts of anxiety. Now this makes sense because focusing on the extrinsic rewards puts us kind of on a hamster wheel of always chasing something. We want more of this, we want more of that, we, want, we need to have this, so we tell ourselves. Whereas when you focus on the intrinsic rewards, you get a sense of vitality, which leads to a higher self-esteem, a higher ability to problem solve, and increased sensitivity to things around you. And the intrinsic reward leads to having clear business goals. Failure to not have these clear business goals can lead to an inability to explain your business, you're not taken seriously, your priorities start to become a little fuzzy or you fail to generate your ideal business and you have a difficult time recognizing and developing new opportunities. You see, when you develop and pursue intrinsic rewards, you operate at a level of personal choice, of self-initiation, self-accountability, and self-management. This is what leads to personal commitment, and personal commitment is what sustains excellence. When it comes to building business success, your first focus is internal. The relationships you have and promote with people in your company. In doing this, you need to pay attention to the stories of your organization. So what can they tell you? A lot. Knowing the stories of your company can tell you several things. First, it can tell you who has the power and how do they use it. Secondly, it can tell you whom can you really trust, who will help and who tells the truth. Third, how much do people laugh, both at themselves or at each other? The fourth thing that it can tell you is how competitive people are with each other. And next, how people handle conflict. Do they sweep it under the rug or do they make efforts to clear the air? You see, the stories of your organization tell you about very key issues in your company. They can tell you about power. They can tell you about trust. They tell you about formality. They can tell you about competition, conflict, or even humor. Trust is very important because it seems that it's the most sensitive issue that we have in business today. Trust is the main characteristic which is necessary for high morale in your company. 
All other characteristics are negotiable, but trust is a given. If trust is not high among and between employees at all levels of the company, whether it's your executives, the board of directors, your supervisors, or your employees, none of the other relationship characteristics can offset the damage done when trust is missing. Trust is so pivotal to the morale of the company that it is the foundation that everything else in the company rests on, including long-term performance of the company. Here's the hierarchy of how trust influences your company. Once you build trust, then morale increases. And when morale increases, people are more optimistic. They're focused because they spend two-thirds of their time doing what they like, which results in high performance. You see, there is nothing that can offset the damage caused when trust is missing.